Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bitcoin, everybody. Today is September 30th, 2020. So glad to be here in the studio and glad to have you guys here with me as well. And it's good that we're here together. We're here again at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, like we always are, because I got to tell you, uh, I am fairly um, I am fairly disappointed as an American and not for the reasons that other individuals are. Uh, if anything, you know, I talked about this a while ago. I talked about this a while ago. If you are looking to break out of the mold, to be your own person, to do something unique, interesting, exciting, to actually provide um, genuine, unique value to the world, i.e. invent something or discover something or just do something genuinely new, be an inventor, be a creator, be an entrepreneur, um, then there is nobody that's going to be there along the path that pats you on the back and tells you what a great idea you are, you have um, until you actually have some semblance of success, right? When you are grinding, struggling, putting the work in, uh, you know, staying up late, working Saturdays, burning the candle at both ends, uh, which you kind of have to do in my firm opinion, right? There's not too many things that I agree with Gary Vee on, but one thing that I do agree with is if you're in your 20s and you're not working on Saturdays, somebody's gonna eat your lunch. Um, but when you do have a semblance of success, uh, generally people are pretty quick to come out of the woodwork and tell you what a genius you were all along and how they always believed in you. So remember, uh, it's the people very similar to working on a job site. It's the people who are there with you, putting in the work, putting in the effort, putting in the grind, uh, who are really the ones that are, um, feel good crossing the finish line with. But with that being said, uh, in that same in that same kind of segment, when you hold um, a positional trade open or when you trade your bias or when you have a conviction or when you have a belief, right? Um, and when you hold that belief and you express that belief to other individuals, there's very often, uh, often there's not very many people who are like, yeah, we totally agree with you. You're a genius. Ah! <sighs> right? It takes courage, conviction, and patience to really stick to your guns and let your beliefs play out. And in my case, as a trader, sometimes that's going to be my fundamental bias when it comes to to, uh, to a positional trade. So actually where I'm putting my money. So that even makes it more complicated as an individual, especially as a guy. But uh, let's just say um, that it's not too often though, that there is something on national television that just confirms uh, my conviction in my beliefs. All right, so following, obviously we had the presidential debate in the United States last night, and I don't even have uh, do I? I think I do. I have I have dank memes. All right, we'll pull up a couple dank memes to talk about as we uh, as we discuss this real quick. Then we'll get into the charts real briefly. We're only going to be be able to do an hour long show today. And here in about 20, 25 minutes, we're going to bring on senior analyst Alexander um, uh, to talk about his market analysis from this morning. Uh, let's see here, dank memes. And OK. So I don't want to turn this into a, uh, I certainly am not going to turn this into a, uh, into a political debate uh, because I don't want to turn this way. There we go. Uh, I don't want to uh, really cast stones. It doesn't matter, guys. First off, let me just state that very, very clearly. Um, I am really done having any kind of arguments or discussions with any individuals about the merits of the uh, the left or the right at this point in time. Um, that's really not the pressing issue. And I see that I've just broken my Google watch. Um, my Apple watch, excuse me. That's really not the pressing issue at this point in time, right? The the um, the dice have already been cast, right? In my firm opinion, the most significant issue affecting any American or really any citizen of any country right now is going to be uh, the debt crisis, right? Uh, over the last, let's say, and we could really say since the central bank was instituted in, um, in the early 1900s, but over the last 20 to 30 years, certainly, uh, at an accelerated rate, the financial sector has hoovered up a large majority of the middle class's wealth, um, putting us into some pretty extreme uh, disparities. And again, this is coming from somebody who agrees with most fiscally conservative policies, so I don't want to hear it, libertarians. Uh, but certainly I can agree that individuals all over the place feel pretty displaced, pretty betrudged upon. When you combine this with increasing militarism from the government, from the state, uh, when you combine this with increased surveillance from the let's call it the deep state. I don't even really like that word, but certainly from our alphabet companies, but overall from our uh, corporations and companies as well. Um, it's a, uh, it's a bad world. Uh, it, it's a, it's a bad time to find oneself in, um, or it can be, or it can be. Uh, what I try to do, what I try to imagine is all of the opportunities that exist, right? So remember, uh, there were some individuals in here shilling hex yesterday saying that Bitcoin hasn't been audited in 10 years. Of course, that's a ludicrous um, uh, assertion. Uh, the reality is, is that there's no such thing as perfect security. There will never be a perfect cryptocurrency that's ever going to be created um, because privacy, or excuse me, security and 
uh, malevolence, let's say, um, white hat, black hat is a constant battle, right? Um, black hats find an exploit, they exploit it, white hats upgrade the system, they patch, they release the patch, and then this just continual fight goes on. It's a continual battle between order and chaos. And of course, the universe tends toward entropy, but from my perspective, it certainly doesn't. So, so you know, I'm not going to comment on who laid the smackdown or who did well in the debate. I really don't think that those, com uh, those comments are germane. The reason why I'm overall disappointed is because um, I just saw very, very plainly that, yeah, this is what we get, right? This is what we get. Um, we get a, um, you know, and, and certainly there are policies, uh, individuals watching this show certainly know who I would, who, who I am going to be voting for, but it's just, it's, it's just, uh, it's just rough to actually see it right on primetime television and have this be the norm that this is the bread and sport that we're being presented. And it makes me very firm in my convictions. It makes me very confident in my decision to begin accumulating Bitcoin, to begin accumulating precious metals in physical form, um, to reduce holdings in more riskier assets, uh, to largely hold off of the market, to hold my hedge position open, to look for those hedges, and to really play my conviction when it seems that the rest of the market is certainly moon boiling it up right now because it seems from youtube that everybody thinks that this is the dip to end all dips so uh keep in mind guys that it is at the end of the day a beautiful time to be alive there are so many opportunities there is so much knowledge there are so many things to do uh it is really fantastic and incredible and there are such amazing people in spite of everything so just remember that if you ever feel but you know downtrodden or be trudged upon or depressed or uh, anything. Yes, there are going to be dark times coming uh, because we are going to experience a financial crisis, particularly with a dollar collapse. So this is going to affect all major nations. Uh, we are going to experience a second wave of lockdowns. Israel is already in a partial lockdown and portions of the UK are already in lockdowns. And we're likely going to see the Eurozone to follow. Um, this is going to help precipitate a, another wave of coronavirus financial crisis. Um, and it's going to suck to go through, but there is a beautiful light on the other end of the tunnel. And we have developed technologies like Bitcoin, uh, and Ethereum, for example, that can help us um, kind of cast off this yoke of centralized finance and debt-laden interest systems, hopefully forever. So bullish on humanity, guys, with that limit order. All right, with that being said, I want to say thank you. I don't know why I still have that image up. Let's do another dank meme. I want to say thank you to... Da, 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 da. This is how I felt. Um, I want to say thank you to... Um, uh, good friend of the show, uh, Spectre Security Coin. Make sure to go check them out, spectresecurity.crackingcryptocurrency.com or Spectre, S-P-E-C-T-R-E dot crackingcryptocurrency.com. They have their online course up now. So if you guys would like to become more proficient in your security knowledge, and again, being proficient in security right now is a necessity. You have to understand uh, how the digital systems that are going to run your life now and into the future are operating. Uh, the less that you know about the way that the machines that you rely on every single day, uh, uh, the less you know about the machines you rely on, the less powerful and effective you are, the less valuable you are, the less useful you are. Certainly, I can't even consider employing anybody who can't, who can't affect, not, not only do you need to know how to use a computer uh, to be employed by me, you have to have a basic understanding of analysis. You have to understand how to learn, which means you have to understand how to do efficient search optimization. Um, you have to understand um, you know, preferably you have to have a good understanding of like devices and Android and all these things. They just make you certainly a more effective person. Heck, nowadays I'm, I'm kind of expecting HTML, Python, MySQL, everything coming through the door. All right. With that being said, uh, don't forget to smash the likes up guys and, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about, uh, where we're at with our state of late stage capitalism, late stage empire state. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to the church. All right, here we are in the live stream. Okay, uh, let's give a big shout out to Mr. Hutt QC, Mr. Ether, Saintsy, Midwest Attempts as always. Uh, we've got Asriel's, the Stream Elements bot holding it down. Nice hash Logan. We've got right on Rice, Crypto Jack, Wook Chewy. Uh, we've got, um, who else do we got? Beeflow, David Rice, Peckham08, Mr. Unicorn. Thank you so much for the uh, the membership over here on YouTube, Mr. Unicorn, highly appreciate that. You go chill. We've got Crypto Caveman. Let's see here. Crypto God. YY. 
and Profit Bear. All right, and Philly from Manchester. Good to see you guys. Uh, crypto God says, I just doubled down on Badeo, right? Well, let's go see what he's doing. He is the God of crypto after all. All right, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we can do this. Where are we at? Uh, what's our rank here? How do I get a uh, crypto God? How do I get it on this video? Ooh, Uniswap. All right. Let's go to my bat cave here. Look at bid. Says he's doubling down. Hmm. We go to Sansiment. Look at up all this information, but we'll come to this in a second. Uh, no thoughts, no opinions. Uh, let's see. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. I will come back to this in just a second. Best of luck to you, sir. All right. Um, what did I want to do first? Okay. Uh, big shout out to everybody who left a comment on yesterday's video. Highly appreciated that. Uh, let's start off today as we always do real quick. How much time do I got? Am I doing good on time? 12.18. About, uh, about 15 minutes. About 15 minutes. So uh, we covered the weekly yesterday. Um, so let's just see if we have any change in our trend following system or any signals first off from our pathways to profit system that we've been showcasing here on stream. Uh, here we can see that we are not receiving any new signals from our pathways to profit system. Uh, QQE mod, which we are using as an initiator, uh, has generated a negative signal. However, we're not getting colored volume bars. QQE mod is below the initiation level. Um, so we could be looking for re-entry. Uh, if our confirmer here in the form of the MACD leader were to cross back below the zero line here, our initiation level. Uh, let's see here. Our uh, OBV oscillator from Lazy Bear, which is acting as our volume ND or a vol filter, uh, is actually in the negative territory, confirming daily bearish trades to the downside. And IFT RSI, uh, let's see here, which is going to be our exit indicator, has actually given us the exit signal by recovering from overbought conditions over here on the 24th. 24th, yeah, 23rd, 23rd is when we would have got that signal and nothing here so far. And we are below the super trend, which we are currently using as a baseline. Uh, and that super trend is sitting up at, let's hide these at 11,487. So uh, daily PTP looking for a trending trade uh, on the level of, let's say taking Quadrigo, where we'd be looking for, you know, one to three uh, actual average, uh, excuse me, standard deviations away from current price, looking for about a 10% price movement, wants to see price at least as we can see here break above this uh, most recent high, which we talked about yesterday, uh, where we do have a potential. Let's actually put PTP back on here. And we will go to uh, where do I want to do this trending. And there's this Yeah, let's do this over here. We do have our weekly set up here. Yeah, we do have our weekly setup here where we are essentially looking for price on the weekly time frame, retesting the logarithmic trend line from 2017 all time high and 2019 market high and 2020 market high before we broke through. So we are in a paradigm shift. And unfortunately, it just happened. It just so happens to be at a time when we're going to have some fundamental catalysts coming in. So one thing that we talked about yesterday and one thing that I would be watching out for is, of course, the Adam and Eve to form right here. Uh, as I've talked about, double bottoms work fantastically in cryptocurrency. However, I will say that their success rate is going to be a little bit reduced uh, because um, we're not actually bottomed. Now, some may have an alternative opinion than that. So, for example, uh, as we looked at the weekly trend here and determined that based on weekly exponential moving averages, we certainly were in a bullish trend uh, because price had been riding above the 200, the 100, and the 55. Uh, we had had a 13 and 55 weekly EMA crossover, and all we've done so far is pull back into the pocket of the short-term EMAs, the 8, the 13, and the 21, uh, which can often see uh, which can often serve as a kind of a springboard for price. So that certainly makes sense. All, all we're looking at here is a bullish trend on the weekly time frame and a pullback to a median level, right? doesn't matter whether you're using 
doesn't really matter which baseline you're using as long as it's of a medium level of sensitivity. Uh, if you're using Super Guppy uh, or uh, um, Super Trend, or if you're using Pivots, or you know, generally the uh, the moving average style, um, or excuse me, centered oscillator um, indicators, the on-screen indicators, the overlay indicators, um, they're all going to be roughly the same, right? Because they all kind of act and, and react the same or are similar in their Excuse me. What I'm trying to say is that most of the popular indicators in the form of moving averages that you would overlay on the price chart instead of underlay indicators, which would live underneath the price chart, um, are all going to be roughly suggesting the same thing, right? Uh, that price has pulled back in a bullish trend. And I think overall, the sentiment certainly that I'm hearing from the majority of traders on the social media rounds is moon boy behavior. And I seem to be the only one. And again, I might not be, uh, but I certainly am short. Uh, I'm going to hold my short, and uh, yeah, it's about that. Uh, yesterday, all right, so uh, we talked about that double bottom. What would it take to invalidate that? Now, again, I want to make this very clear. The weekly isn't a pronounced. The weekly from the exponential moving averages uh, is in a bullish trend, right? In my opinion, in my opinion, uh, we have begun a weekly reversal, right? Which we can see if we go look at a reversal chart, we look at market tops and bottoms. For example, when we look at, uh, let's see here, the ISIS spot sell signal, uh, which interrupted the count to the upside, we can actually take this off and we can take this off as well. Uh, no weekly bottom feeder signal here. We are on a red TD sequential count. The current week is not completed. And last week was a hanging man candle. Now, there's a lot that can occur between here. Uh, I do think that the daily is oversold in spite of the weekly being overall neutral in a bearish trend. So I do think that the daily is oversold and we can't actually see price move up. Bottom feeder is still calling for a price to hit 11,145. So not a new ATH or excuse me, not a break of this high. Uh, but certainly if price were to move up there, uh, it would be attractive to me. And we can see price after forming this V bottom move sideways in consolidation, really holding the support quite well. I think it's more likely the price moves up from here, uh, especially given the bottom feeder signal, the ISIS spot daily buy signal here and CM Laguerre. Uh, tops and bottoms is also petered out here to the downside. So certainly price more likely to move up than down here in the short term. Everything else is a little bit. Um, uh, everything else is a little bit iffy. So uh, I'm holding my shorts from above 11,000. So any price level as we march back up on this correction, I would view this as a correction in a new bearish trend. And what does one do in bearish trends? One shorts corrections, right? We've talked about this before, three screens entry. If you determine that the trend is bearish on the weekly time frame, one thing that you can do is look for overbought conditions on the daily time frame to enter into your shorts. That's how you can actually get a more precise price. Um, Midwest Attempt says the hanging man candle was the reason he exited his long on Sunday's close, and that's turned out to be the correct call so far. Yep, indeed. Now, as far as intraday goes, uh, yesterday, during yesterday's stream, right before we actually during break, uh, I did take that long trade, and I do have the do have the final numbers here for you. Don't get out of your seats; it's not that impressive. But I just put my money where my mouth was. Uh, it's about three Bitcoin. That's all. Um, and I had an entry at ten thousand six hundred and eighty point five, and I took profit at ten thousand seven hundred and forty seven point five, which is interesting, by the way, because I had my limit order set for ten thousand seven hundred fifty. Now I did use the BTC USDT perpetual contract. Uh, so not the inverse perpetual contract on Bybit. Uh, and I did use the feature when you, uh, I opened market and clicked the uh, box that said open long with uh, TP and SL, right? You can now, there's now a checkbox on the BTC USDT contract. Um, and instead of being filled at 10,750, I got filled at 10,407.5. So that's interesting to me. So... I'm going to see. I, I think I must have just done something wrong. Uh, but keep that in mind. All right. Um, other than that, let's look at the funding and premium index here on the hourly time frame. Uh, we are certainly seeing uh, bearish divergence in futures price diverging uh, below or below spot price. Uh, meaning that spot price is currently a little bit more bullish than futures price. We are seeing quite uh, quite a bit of sell side pressure here. Uh, and really, it's not sell side pressure. Uh, it's really the um, 
it is the well it really is though um you know i did you know i often don't watch other youtubers but i did happen to catch a little bit of crown the other day and i heard him talking about funding and how funding is not really related to buying and selling because on most features platforms there's one long for every short and while that is true there the what what divergence here in funding is telling you is it's a mechanism to incentivize individuals to not go long or not go short, right? If the funding rate is quite high, it incentivizes individuals to not hold longs and to hold shorts. And when the funding rate is quite low, it incentivizes people to long and not short. And the only reason that funding rate, uh, the way the funding rate is calculated and the reason it exists is to keep price in line on the futures platforms, or, or excuse me, on the perpetual platform with, um, with spot price, right? Because it is uh, certainly, at least on BitMEX, it is there. There are ways to arbitrage uh, by holding bankroll on different accounts, uh, but it's certainly not as fluid as the quick, fast, done, easy send an atomic transaction uh, um, arbitrage that one might think of. Uh, and we've got a pretty interesting, uh, I like to call that a swoop candle here on the hourly. Uh, will we see further downside? Uh, who knows? Uh, I don't know. Uh, certainly I am not in a position right now. I don't have a long position right now. The only position that I have is uh, my short. Uh, but I am overall in favor of looking for a long in this area. Uh, the only thing though, I would like to see how this hourly candle plays out because I've seen these play out a few times uh, where we do kind of, uh, because, uh, sorry, sorry, let me start from the beginning here. Uh, instead of a double bottom, let's go to the daily here. Instead of a double bottom, right? So here's the rounded uh, U bottom and here's the V bottom. This certainly could also be a swing failure pattern, right? Where we put in a high, we put in a low, and we make and we fail to make another high, and that is generally confirmed when we actually close um, whatever time frame we're looking at below the previous low. Uh, and then, if you want a more, you can either enter into the position right there and be comfortable with some drawdown. Generally, the way I trade, or if you want a more precise entry with the risk of actually losing the entry, you would uh, short the next correct. You would short the next correction, right? Uh, which day do we close the week? Uh, Sunday. Sunday is the last day of the week because we start off our week, sir, with Money Monday. All right, so certainly something to keep your eye on. I wouldn't get too tense on the hourly. Um, I'm not going to lie. This is... I have some fun here, guys. You got this. I'm reconnecting to Bybit. One moment, please. Uh, I am going to put on a short right here, guys. And I'm going to be looking for a take profit of 10.736. And let's go ahead and do 10.736. Ten seven eighty point five. Ah, uh, come on now. Sorry, guys. I'm trying my best. Come on, man. It really doesn't want me to do this, does it? 
Okay, there we go. And that one as well. I swear to God, that wasn't me. That one was, though. I don't know if you guys saw that. I'm, this isn't even the chart. I'm just flexing. I'm just flexing. I do have a short position open, guys. Uh, Jason, if you would be so kind as to call that as a signal for the premium trading group. <clears throat> Market entry at current price, 10,730. Sit. The first TP. All right. Uh, I put three Bitcoin into that trade. So, anyways. Right, yeah, that definitely need people with those computer skills. Uh, all right, it is 12.32, uh, so I certainly have babbled enough. Um, congratulations, guys. I wish you the absolute best. If you look at the, certainly if you look at the minute chart here, uh, I think that uh, long becomes a little bit more obvious. Aliyup, um, or excuse me, that short. So I'm going to bring on senior analyst Alexander uh, because he did some fantastic uh, market analysis. Um, but real quick, yeah, let me get him on, and then I will answer that question in Bucks territory. <clears throat> All right, here we go. One moment, guys. No, cancel. Yeah, but you, you said it's a twenty dollar difference. Get turned up to death. Hopefully you guys can Hear me okay? Um, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, let the stream confirm. 
let the stream confirm. Can you guys uh, can you guys hear uh, the analysts? Alexander, thank you so much for coming to the stream. I apologize, I didn't have the actual 3.5 millimeter audio cords to actually hook it up appropriately. We're doing our best. Ah, uh, well, can everybody hear me just fine? Certainly see your audio going out. Looks good. All right, let's make sure everything else is plugged up and good. All right, so Alex, I wanted to bring you on um, and talk about your analysis this morning. Um, let me answer Blue Box, uh, Blue Box Territory's question here real quick. He says, um, can I talk through why I took that position? Um, I will be honest with you because the visual look of the candlestick right here on the hourly time frame uh, is pretty wicked. Uh, we can see that price has trudged up to make a high. And then we put in a huge wick to the upside, indicating a lot of individuals bought. And what happens, we have a bearish engulfing candle pretty much here on the hourly. I've seen these play out quite a few times. Uh, liquidity raids or um, raids, um, uh, people call them different things, uh, but they're generally followed by um, at least a good risk to reward. Excuse me. They're generally followed by a punctuated movement to the downside. Um, so there's good risk to reward to play that setup. All right, so let's pull up Mr. Alex's uh, analysis here. And Alex, what do you want me to pull up first here, my brother? We got a lot. Uh, do you want to do you want to forego traditional markets and just go right into crypto? Um, sure, sure, we can do that. Um, let me see streamer mode, and I'm gonna put streamer mode on. And there we go. Streamer mode is on, and I should be able to just actually pull. Uh, actually, there we go. I can just pull Discord right here, and I got it. Okay, so um, I there's a little bit of a lag. Oh, here we go. So. Yep, this is uh, this is kind of a uh, morning market analysis. The uh, you know the uh, the market opened the day uh, opened the day down with the Dixie being up. So you know as I've discussed with you guys and, and uh, hopefully you all know right now, the Dixie is kind of inversely correlated to the broader markets because uh, people people buy securities with dollars, so they sell their securities into or they sell their dollars into the securities. And then when they're like panic selling to get out of the market, they're buying dollars with their security. So that's dollar demand. So the Dixie goes up. Uh, so as you can see here, the market opened, opened the day really wanting those dollar bills and not wanting the securities very much, probably because uh, I, there's no way you could have watched last night's debate and not at least thought, man, there is a lot of future risk that I may not be considering in my investments right now. So, uh, but ultimately, uh, the market kind of ended up just uh, just eating up the selling. You know, we've been technically oversold for about a week now because uh, we just had some big dumps. And the market, uh, by the end of the morning, the market had uh, had had finished up, and, and it looks like it's just going to be kind of an up day. You can you can see here, uh, you know, where we've uh, we've broken the downward trend strides on uh, on all the major markets, and uh, we're just kind of continuing on upwards at this point. So. So, so overall, uh, just kind of what we've been expecting that uh, that there was a, another turn in the markets, and they're going to, at the very least, uh, continue up and allow us to secure a location for shorting. If not, maybe just continue, continue, uh, because certainly the uh, the weeklies are looking strong on the traditional markets and the uh, and the crypto markets. So, why don't we go on to uh, to discuss uh, Bitcoin dominance, which I was looking at yesterday. This is actually. This this is, I just wanted to point out that this is actually really good for, um, uh, for anybody who has an actual Bitcoin long position. Uh, we would, you know, I would, I would expect to see based on this and based on your analysis as well, I would expect to see uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin particularly, and probably the rest of the sector as well, follow along with stonks. If stonks are only going to go up right now, um, but yeah. it's, but again, you point out it's a good logical place. You know, we're oversold on the daily, uh, regardless of what may play out here on the weekly. Yeah. I'm still not entirely sure what is going on with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, Ethereum is still kind of trapped below resistance in a way that Bitcoin is not. Um, but I unfortunately, 
uh, it's just it's just not entirely clear as uh, as Justin has, has shown us in his analyses. Um, that being said, uh, when you go down to uh, Bitcoin dominance, uh, Trading View apparently changed the way that it calculates Bitcoin dominance and a uh, total two, which is crypto market cap excluding Bitcoin. So um, yesterday there was a huge gap down in Bitcoin dominance, and uh, this is yeah, this is that's Bitcoin purple. Okay, uh, so yesterday there was a huge gap down in uh, Bitcoin dominance, and I just I looked all around the market. I could not figure out where all this money went. It had to have been like you know twenty, it's like twenty billion dollars would have had to have moved around. It was insane because uh, Bitcoin dominance gapped down like two percent. Um, and, and total number two had gapped up. Uh, so when I looked again today, these had been moved. The gaps are now back in June uh, where they did not exist there before. You can see it there on my chart. You can see like we sort of gap below that trend line there and, the, and then trade a little sideways. That did not exist like that before TradingView added this data. And it's also clear on the total number two chart. There's also a gap up. Um, all the way back in June. Um, it's my contention that uh, TradingView just kind of went and added in uh, some new coins into their basket of alts that they use to calculate total number two. And yeah. then that uh, that negatively affected uh, the Bitcoin dominance because obviously there's a lot more money in the alts they added. So We've seen that before when, uh, particularly when Tether added, um, added all the, when coin market cap began counting all the TRC uh, USDT. Uh, which yeah. they had previously not that significantly rose tether's market capitalization <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. Exactly. um so uh when you look at bitcoin dominance now if you'll go back to the chart before it had looked like it was bouncing off of the 60 percent support and that looked kind of bullish because we were getting it along with a um a tt oversold buy signal um which i mean you can't i mean i guess you could buy bitcoin dominance if you're trading it on ftx but i mean i don't, I don't want to think of it in in those terms right now um but it is a good sign of a reversal uh of the market cycle but but now it looks like it's trapped under resistance and uh the 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 the, the weekly time transformation is starting to look like it might give us a um a top under zero which would be uh, kind of a kind of a nail in the coffin. Um, as a matter of fact, when uh, if you were to zoom out and, and look at it at the monthly, I think I would like to see Bitcoin dominance end up in the fifty three percent area um, before we we finally do the see the real reversal. Let me uh, let me pull it up here. I have it yeah. on my chart right here. Yeah. Um, so we, here's by the way, here's we are getting dominance. a monthly close today, folks. So don't be afraid to open up the monthly charts on all the different markets. You only got to do it once a month and just see if there's any monthly signals. Those are pretty strong, guys. Uh, take a look. BNB had a buy signal last month. Look at BNB right now. Look at BNB right now. I wanted to, um, oh, whoops. Hold on. Let's see here. Control Z. Yeah, I wanted to point out the um, almost divergence of market uh, um uh, market uh, dominance, uh, Bitcoin dominance, and price action. Uh, I want to take some more time with this. I don't want to do it haphazardly, but this is uh, this is fun. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something I noticed about Bitcoin dominance. So if you guys notice that uh, we're, we're down a lot in Bitcoin dominance, that that kind of explains that. And then uh, finally, I want to take a look at the uh, at the broader alt markets. So. Um, you know, there, there's there's alt perp, mid perp, shit perp, and uh, these are the these are indexes made by FTX that represent baskets of altcoins, and we kind of use them to get a sense of what the different altcoin sectors are doing. So, um, you know, loosely grouped, we've we've got the majors, um, we've got the mid caps, and we've got the miners, and of course, then there's also the the ultra low cap shit coins, which are almost universally on the swamp right now. Uh, that's uh, Uniswap. So when you look at the daily here on alt perp, I admit it's not super impressive. Yes, we do have a break of the downward stride, um, but but we're under, we're under the trend support. And we're also, we seem to have traded up 
to the local market point of control, signified by that uh, by that red line, which is where the most trans, which is where the most volume has been transacted in the market. Um, and, and and generally in this situation, you would look to Let me be. See, where's that? Where's that at? I'm sorry, six eighty seven forty. Go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just marking yeah. that out on my chart here. Yeah. So, um, but when you when you open it on the weekly, um, and if you if you open up mid cap, uh, mid mid perp, you'll you'll see that one has also moved up to local market point of control. It, it looks very similarly precariously perched on the daily. I wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to point out here for the altcoin index um, that. You know, that 687.40 is not insane. Uh, it's actually quite interesting. So I have it as a green dash line. So let me make this uh, solid and not dashed here. But uh, bottom feeder uh, is suggesting a movement to the upside here on the weekly. Um, and we mm -hmm. see kind of, we see the basically the same setup that we see in Bitcoin, um, where we have, uh, you know, an established uptrend, prices above the 55, prices above our exponential moving averages. And we've pulled back basically to a level of support to our median zone. Uh, and we're consolidating. Uh, we are attempting to hold that level. Um, and this is a relatively this is a relatively new asset. But bottom feeders nailed this almost every time in the weekly. We can see this cluster here, this cluster here, this cluster here. It hasn't had a losing trade yet, actually. Um, so this would be suggesting a movement to the upside on the altcoins and a uh, a weekly close above that level that you indicated the um, uh, the volume profile. Uh, excuse me, the uh, point of control yeah. um, is also going to be a close above. Uh, the eight uh, weekly EMA. So that's above and clearing all weekly EMAs. Right. So bottom feeder is saying we can take this up to 779. Um, I, I believe it. I um, If you if you open up the weekly for uh, for ship perp and mid perp, these both also look like they have, um, they, they look a lot like the, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. They both look like um, uh, shitcoin shit perp looks like the Nasdaq, where it's it's just pulled so far beyond the previous swing high that it's while it's pulling down to support, that support is kind of nowhere near the previous swing high. You see that you know all the way back pre March. Are you talking about uh, right here in February? Yeah, the, the, exactly. So the, the high in February. So um, this That's reminds me of the Nasdaq chart where it's it, it pulled so far away from the February highs. Um, and the, and the mid cap reminds me of the S and P 500 chart where it did pull all the way back and kind of bounce from the previous February highs. So, I mean, if you, if you look at those, hopefully you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. The similarity mm -hmm. between ship perp and NASDAQ and S and P and mid perp. Well, let's throw the QQQ on here real quick. Mm -hmm. Really, the main yeah, chart. I mean, look at the weekly on shit. Yeah. Tell me that doesn't look right for continuation. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, look at that correlation right there. That's that's pretty beautiful. March meltdown and then a straight trudge all the way to the upside. If you'd have gone long on two things essentially, at the uh, at the at the crest at the at the uh, trow of the uh, March meltdown, shit if you would have bought shit coins and tech stocks, you'd have been in it to win it. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> so. So high correlation between these. This is something I've noticed because I'm, I'm charting these things like all the time. So, uh, you know, now that I'm spending time in the traditional markets, like these two seem heavily correlated. And then if you could pull up also um, mid perp and, and the S&P, let's look at that. So the, uh, you know, the last thing that I wanted to mention here is if we just take a look at uh, what the NASDAQ has done, it's actually bounced pretty significantly um, on, this, uh, on this most recent correction. So if we suggest... Uh, if we assume uh, our shitcoin tech stocks to follow right along with the uh, with the traditional tech stocks, we would expect to see a bit of a more pronounced bounce here. Um, and we are at that level of support. This is a decent setup, man. Uh, we're about halfway through a nine count here on the weekly. Yeah. I think uh, if we can get, mm, I don't know if I like the daily here so much. Just a second. Let me see here. Yeah, I don't know if I like the daily here so much. This still kind of seems like it's I stair agree. stepping down. I agree. Yeah. So I was talking, um, I was talking in the market analysis that like, you know, the weekly looks so strong, but the daily does not look nearly as strong. And I was thinking that we may need just one more small pullback, one more small shakeout before we get the actual weekly movement. Cause I mean, guys, we're only halfway through the week. Like we could we could still like put in one more big wick down and then recover. And then the weekly looks just as clean right now 
it will just look just to clean on on Sunday as it does right now because because it looks beautiful right now. Yeah, if I if we get um, another oversold uh, setup or condition here on um, the Shikland yeah. index, I would I would be looking to take it. Um, yeah. Which I would right love now one more step down, and it would help clean up for me. It would help clean up the daily for me, which which does still look like it's it's struggling to to recover. It's still struggling just a little. Yeah, lower highs and lower lows is not a sign of strength. All right, so the and then you wanted to look at I apologize, mid perp and the spy. Yes, please. Okay, let's. And I think you'll see. Oh, and also, if you look closely, alt perp and Dow Jones Industrial are heavily correlated in the same way because they they have those three because the traditional markets have the three separate sectors too. It's like the blue chips. There's the techs, and then there's the um, and then there's the you know kind of S and P representing the mid caps. Just like, you know, the 500 strong ones. All right. So we'll do alt perp and compare to, I'm sorry, what the Dow? Yeah. All right. Put because, because in the same way that alt perp did not make it over those February highs, the Dow has not made new highs. Putting them both on logarithmic. Look at that. Yeah. And again, we can see, um, I don't know, let's see here. The, uh, the altcoin index is making lower lows. The, um, we can see here that the, the Dow Jones, though, has not really significantly shaken investor confidence by taking out these previous lows. Um, it just does seem a little different to me. Certainly, if I looked at the chart, maybe it wouldn't look that different, but... And again, we can see the spy actually holding up and being a little bit yeah. stronger, but the correlation is impossible to ignore, or the similarity is very difficult to ignore. And again, we can see, um, I don't know, let's see here. Ooh. The, uh, the I can hear myself coming back. Lower lows. I think that's Jason. The, um, we can... um, Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> all right so yeah um, um, you know, i though that's really what i have to say uh you know there's a couple of interesting monthly charts if you throw on uh the monthly lend chart alex um, the, que the question everybody wants to know what shit coins can we buy to make us rich okay i actually do have some good ones. <laughs> i am so glad you asked he said listen in mind um, I, I was looking at Tomo chain has already like kind of taken off and added 50%. I put that up for the members last week in, in premium, um, link might need one, one more small leg down, but, but it's almost ready. It's, 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 it's down like 70, 80%. I remember how, how everybody was like, Ooh, link, link, link. Can, can I buy a link? Can I buy, can I, can I buy a link here? Can I buy a link here? Can I buy a link here? All through, um, all through August. Uh, well, you may be able to buy a link here guys. Um, I would be careful of some of the DeFi coins. You know, for now, the the DeFi DeFi perp just does not look as good and as set up as shit perp does. I mean, you know, the shit shit coins had their day, and then DeFi had their day. It may happen in that order again, but certainly the market seems to be risk risk back on for right now. You know, I, I thought maybe maybe you know maybe we would move towards you know, the more quality projects, I'm not sure that's necessarily happening. Or maybe that we would move more towards the major alts. I'm not entirely sure that's happening, although they are recovering a little bit. I would still be very weak about grabbing things that are bottomed out and weak. Yeah, I agree. I am I'm certainly of the mind to to short everything I can get my hands on. Um however I do think that there is some validity to taking a Bitcoin long trader, but again I can only put my money, I can only tell and show people where I put my money. And obviously I just put on a short intraday short. And in fact, looking at Chainlink, uh, perps over on FTX, I would certainly short this candle right here. And I would take a stab on a short on Tomo Chain. Now I got the hourly charts pulled up. Certainly a fantastic call on the weekly getting into this movement, uh, Alex. And Chainlink's still in a weekly downtrend here on the perps. Yeah, I would be, uh, I would be, uh, it's, this is the dip. It's not going to dip any lower. Yeah, right. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. 
All right. Uh, we got to wrap it. Everybody, I call Tomo Chain at that bottom. I'll have you know. Yes. Uh, by the way, this gives us a good opportunity to do a few trades of the day. Uh, we've talked previously about basically how we... Uh, we, I talked yesterday about how we put on our Forex positions. Nothing to do. Yes, they're still killing it. Come back later. Uh, so let's do, uh, let's do Theta USDT. Let's, uh, let's highlight Theta USDT. Theta USDT was something we called for the premium trading group. We called this on the 18th of August uh, with an average entry of 0 0.43823. Let's see here. Boom, and we did have an average exit on theta of, let's see, 0 0.4. All right, let's see here. Now, if I just ignore the rest of the chart, it looks darn good. Zero points. 0.4735, come on now. Boom. Now, that was what we, averaged out but again just catching this nice range uh nice and consistent easy going i don't recall let's see here let's look at the notes if this was yeah all right so this was a breakout trade actually i believe this was from jason or was this from you alex with theta yeah theta usdt i'm pretty sure yep because i do see that this was a breakout trade uh take profit one was hit stop loss was moved to break even uh, uh, let's see here. It seems that upon hitting that take profit, Jason thought that we were in price discovery and that this room had plenty of room to run. And he said a trailing stop loss at the daily close low. Unfortunately, that trailing stop loss was actually triggered here, giving one the average exit of right here. But overall, really good trade. Nice, almost 10% on, on theta. And then the other highlight that I want to give is let's see here hypercash i'm gonna go back quite a bit for that one let's see here hypercash we put on the 14th of september and we averaged 7.32 percent with an average entry of 1.4809 and i know that this was both of you guys together i remember hypercash this is when we all put on together um, you're like, if you say so, do I have to take credit for it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, when opportunity strikes, let's see here. And again, a nice, good, consistent. What is this? Uh, 7.32% on hypercash. So again, just a decent, steady average return. And I like to see that just putting away locking in returns. Let's see. We entered that on the 14th. So that'd have been this movement right here. And if one had been playing this more aggressively, obviously putting this trade, this ticker on one's radar, one could have caught the initial signal and then waited for a pullback and then re-entered on those conditions. We can see here on the four hour. Let's see. We do. Yeah, we certainly do get oversold in that area. Here's that initial move up and then price pulls back. A lot of opportunities to enter here on time transformation or um, Isis bot or Minx or anything else, Watatar explosion, and then a beautiful turn to the downside. However, I don't believe this is an asset that we'd be shorting anywhere, but look how smooth it was to short that as opposed to long it. So, all right, uh, slowly crossing off trades of the day off my list. We've got so many of them uh, and I'll be putting out uh, August's and September's trading report from the premium trading group here in just a little bit. With that being said, Alex, any final words? I have no final words. No final words. I Breathless. All right. Well, thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for contributing and uh, for sharing your market analysis with us today. Um, really appreciate that. And I know that the members are going to be looking forward to an evening update from you as well, because you have been on it very lately, sir. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go promising an evening update. I, all I got to <laughs> say is about You guys heard it here. I'm so Alex, I'm sorry. <laughs> you Thanks, Alex. <laughs> thank you, Alex. I'll talk to you soon. Right back. All right. All right. With that being said, guys, let's head to the big scene. Ooh. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Uh, today's been September 30th, 2020.
Uh, we're almost there, guys. 30 days past September, April, June, and November. Tomorrow, the next time we meet, it will be October. And all of September's woes will be gone. Uh, spoiler alert for, excuse me, not spoiler alert, but challenge for the super fans out there. Go back and watch just the, just the opener of October 1st, uh, live stream here on Cracking Crypto, Breaking Bitcoin Market Update from October 1st, 2019. Uh, and, um, and we were feeling the same way back then too, right? So the end, moving into the end of the month, moving into the end of the year, moving into October, one of my favorite years, time to get the hoodies out, time to put on the uh, beanies and time to hang up the Halloween ornaments, guys. And honestly, listen, it's it's been this way for the last two years for me. A time to secure my profits from the year of trading and do my best not to do anything stupid, right? This bull run has been very good to me and my family this year. And my primary concern is not making more money right now. It is preserving and protecting what I've already made. And so I am putting that in the traditional prepper inventory bullets bandages and mres ladies i will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m central standard time make sure to smash the like button subscribe if you haven't already and if you're interested in our premium signal service our premium analysis our indicator suite our online trading academy or our personal mentoring which we will be doing our community mentoring session today at 2 p.m to 4 p.m make sure to check out everything that we do at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com that's premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com links will be in the description and in the comment section down below. Cheers, guys. Have a fantastic day.